Poem vs. Prose. In this corner, we're in linear verses, weighing in at a rhythmical metric, stemming from the old Greek word Boeces, the vernacular champion, we have poem. And in another corner, wearing grammatically correct trunks, weighing in at almost a speech-like natural conversation, stemming from the Latin expression, Rosa Horatio, the everyday people's champion, we have pros. Okay now, let's have a clean fight. No hidden below the page, keep your metaphors up at all times, and be sure to listen as we're about to define poem verse prose. If you've ever attended an open mic or poetry slam, chances are you've heard more prose than poems. Some don't realize, but there is a significant difference between the two. Round one, structure. Poems are made up of verses. A verse is a metrical composition, a group of lines that form a unit in a poem or song, a stanza. If you listen to modern day songs on the radio, most of them are composed of three verses. Usually the format is first verse, then chorus, second verse, then chorus, third verse, then chorus. A chorus in a song is also a verse, a repeating verse, also known to the poetry world as a refrain. They also have an intro, bridge, and outro, but this isn't songs defined. Poems are linear. They have line breaks that completely go against the rules of grammar. In fact, when it comes to grammar, this is how poetry tends to feel. There are poems which follow the rules of grammar, aside from the whole line breaking thing, but it is not a requirement. Poems come in all shapes and sizes, and they must have rhythm. We spoke about that before. So the only trait each dictionary feels is important to mention in its definition of poetry is rhythm. Prose are not usually concerned with aesthetics like poems are. Prose come in paragraphs and follow the laws of grammar. Your everyday speech, novels, essays, news articles, the law, etc. are all prose. The sentences are also written in ordinary language, meaning they are often quite easier to read and comprehend. In general, they require a lot less work on the part of the reader in comparison to poems. But don't let the structure fool you. Prose is not dumbing it down. It is just packaged in a more digestible way because, well, it is our natural language. I think it is also safe to say, in terms of quantity, there are way more spoken and written prose in the world than there are poems. Prose come in many sizes, and they don't need rhythm. It should be noted, there are debates on the exact structure of prose. But when it comes to art, when isn't there a debate? Round two purpose. Each poem's purpose is ultimately defined by its author, but the general purpose of a poem is to strive for aesthetic beauty. Whether it is to dissect a perspective on philosophy, be humorous, or share a personal experience, a poem looks to do so in a way deemed attractive. The point is for the feeling to come across as best as possible. Poetry is driven by imagery. Prose are more straightforward. Indeed, a prose could be beautiful, and like a poem, the purpose is ultimately defined by its author, but its general priority is to pass along information as efficiently as possible. It may try to get you to feel a specific emotion, but it doesn't have to. Prose are often driven by narrative qualities, plots, characters, a story arc. Round three, examples. Final round, time to stop talking about what they are made of and actually show what they are made of. First, the poem. An excerpt from Ancient Autumn by Charles Simic. Is that foolish youth still sawing the good branch he's sitting on? Do the orchard and hill wheeze because of it, and the few remaining apples sway? Can he see the village in the valley the way a chicken hawk would? And now, the prose counterpart. Is that young boy still squandering and not appreciating the good in his life? Are those around him affected by his foolishness and fear what might happen to themselves because of it? I wonder how sharp his perception is and if he could see the consequences of his actions. Second example, a poem, an excerpt from The Anniversary of My Death by William S. Merwin. Every year without knowing it I have passed the day when the last fires will wave to me and the silence will set out, tireless traveler like the beam of a lightless star. And now it's prose counterpart. Every year without knowing it, there is a day on the calendar in which will become the anniversary of my death, the day I take my last breath and will become nothing but a memory. There we have it. Two examples of what the poem and prose version would look like. I am sure there is some bias in the interpretation of the poems on my behalf. But again, 
just wanted to show you how it would look structurally. Now beware, some gifted with gab know how to leap between verse and prose in a single breath. Ultimately, there will be times when the only one who can tell the difference audibly between the two is the author. Okay, time to review the judges' cards. Poems are written in verse, and they are linear. They have rhythm, are driven by imagery, and they aspire to share an emotion. Prose are written in paragraphs. Their structure is grammatically correct. They sound like everyday speech, and they are driven by narrative qualities. Well, that does it. Now you know how poems and prose are different. I hope this helped, and don't forget to... Wait, I'm sorry. My producer is telling me we forgot something. No, it can't be. How is that possible? But we just broke it all down, and now you're telling me... Prose poem. It exists. There is a such thing as a prose poem. Okay, let's see if we can dissect the literary world's yeti. A prose poem is literature, written in the structural format of a prose, but with poetic qualities such as heightened imagery, metaphors, emotional effects, and other figures of speech common in poetry. While doing research, I came across something on poets.org which I think is super helpful in this discussion. The prose poem essentially appears as prose, but reads like poetry. Peter Johnson explained, Just as black humor straddles the fine line between comedy and tragedy, so the prose poem plants one foot in prose, the other in poetry, both heels resting precariously on banana peels. The link to the article can be found in the description of this video. Here's an example I found on prose-poems.com. It is called Young Mother by Francis Ponge. I hope I'm saying his name right. And the link to it can be found in the description of this video. A great short read. Another example I found is on study.com. Megan Pryor wrote an article on this very same topic in which she included a prose poem by Gary Young titled, I Discovered a Journal. The link to the article and prose poem is also in the description of this video. Both are on the same page and worth the read. Okay, I think we've pretty much covered it. We went through three rounds to finding the differences between a poem and prose, and we gave an explanation of the existence of the prose poem. I hope this has put things into a clearer perspective for you. Be sure to continue on in your own research and let us know in the comments. Also, don't be greedy. Share this with those you care about, but only those you care about. So hit that subscribe and like button and stay tuned for more in the future. Thanks for watching Poetry Defined. Probably the most popular. Everyone is challenged to write one new poem per day. 30 poems in 30 days. Hence its name, feet. A foot is a basic unit of measurement of a meter. It is the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables. Or...